Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this third session of the GEM webinar series 2023. My name is Marie-Noëlle Wallaise. Uh, I'm a research program officer at the French Agency for Development and in charge of the GEM Vietnam project. So today we have the pleasure to welcome Professor Thuy Le Toan of the CESBIO Laboratory uh, in Toulouse, France. Uh, she will talk on resilient and low carbon rice farming strategy in the Mekong Delta. So today's presentation uh, corresponds to the focus number five of the Mekong in the Emergency Report uh, that we released last year on the occasion of COP27. So Tri uh, Lotoan's talk will last about 30 minutes and then we will have about 15 minutes of discussion with Alexis Drogoul, Alexis Drogoul who is a research director at IRD and specialized in computer modeling of complex socio-environmental systems. So after this discussion part between uh, Tree and Alexi, the discussion will be open to the rest of the audience uh, for the last 10-15 uh, minutes. So you can, of course, ask questions during the presentation in the chat. Uh, please feel free to do it and, uh, well, uh, have a good webinar. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marie Noël. So let me uh, share the screen of my presentation. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you see? Um... Yeah. Okay. Oh. It's not full screen mm. yet, but. Not yes. yet. Is, is it okay yeah. now? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, I run my screen. Okay. Okay. So as um, I'm Thuy Toine from Toulouse, France, and uh, this talk is uh, based on the report, uh, COP27 report, uh, Emergency um, Mekong Delta, and um, I uh, this work has been done with my colleagues here at the list, the author of the report from CSBO, Globio, uh, VNSC, uh, and Himhen in Vietnam, and AFP. And the um, this work follow the um, the work done for the uh, FB James 2021 report called uh, the, in the chapter Agriculture in Vietnam under the impact of climate change. And the, uh, I um, acknowledge the, uh, the Kness Vierksco project where the remote sensing part of this study is conducted jointly uh, within this project. Okay. I have to go. Okay, so um, the Vietnam Mekong Delta is covered 40,000, uh, more than 40,000 square kilometers and home for 17.4 million people. And most of them, 80% engage in rice production. And for the, um, this accounts for 56% of the country rice production and 90% of the country rice export. And Vietnam is the third largest rice export, uh, exporter uh, in 2022-2023 after India and Thailand, and uh, accounting for about 2 billion of US dollars in 2021. And uh, here uh, on the right, you can see that the Mekong Delta uh, and the rise um, uh, at different uh, growth stage as observed by the satellite uh, uh, something and one and processed by us. And so the, this, the Mekong Delta has long been the country rice bowl. And this rice production play an essential role in Vietnam. It's contributed to, to national food security, affecting the livelihood of farmers, impacting on social security and social stability, and embodying ecological and cultural value in Vietnamese society. Next one, please. 
And yet the Mekong Delta is facing the biggest challenges caused by increasing uh, climate change. So you can see that it's a, a low lying land impacted, uh, heavily impacted by sea level rise. And here you can see that flooding, uh, subsidence, drought, some intrusion, and it's uh, uh, exacerbated by the human uh, pressure that you see hydro uh, power dams um, and um, subsidence uh, created by um, here cow water uh, pumping or sand mining, etc. So in this general context, what we know, we know that the intensive agriculture and climate change are mutually exacerbating their threats on the Mekong Delta. But Vietnam is producing more rice than needed for the country food security, and the country now earns less than before from exporting it because of that the, um, the market now demands uh, greater diversity uh, of food than rice, and also the food products not certified due to the amount of chemicals. And uh, what we know also that nature-based solution in general argue more for the long-term resilience of the Delta than the hard solution, raising like uh, building infrastructure, et cetera. And in this context, uh, the, our study has the objective first to provide the mapping information of climate and human related risks impacting rice, rice land and rice yield. And we, for that, we use in-situ observation, satellite observation for the prison and modern based projection for the future. And the second is to derive possible option for adaptation and mitigation measure to the current uh, problem and also the uh, potential uh, roadmap for the future. So the, um, those are two things, the resilient rice farming strategy and the uh, low carbon strategy. And the resilient rice farming strategy need to be considered in each of the main eco hydrological subregions. And here you can see the map of the Mekong Delta with uh, three uh, subregions. The first is the high flood zone characterized by flood ecology intensified by the annual flooding season. The second is the middle alluvion fresh water uh, region, a very fertile region. And the other one is the coastal area and Kama Peninsula, where we have a drought, salinity, intrusion, and subsidence. In the flood zone, in here, in Angjiang, Dong Thap, et cetera, we have high dike system. It's about four or five meters high that protect the rice field from flooding. And here you see here the dike system. And then when you have the, the, the high dike, you can have a three cups of rice per year. Like you can grow rice during the crop season. And here, the map here shows the red one is the triple rice, three uh, uh, rice crop per year. The blue is a double, two per year, and the green is single rice crop. And you can see that the Anyang here, where the, um, and the flood, the water, flood water, not um, invaded in the rice field, they can grow the rice. And uh, here it don't have. And then you can see that here the, the downstream where the dike is uh, uh, lower, one or two meters, uh, the flood water can go. And so in this downstream uh, region, the dry crops calendar traditionally avoid the fruit season. And here you have the fruit season and the crop calendar in, for example, Gang Thơ, here the summer autumn season and winter spring season here and uh, the flood come after harvest and before the planting of the next season. But now, now we have the um, flood extent and timing, and we can observe that they have a significant interannual changes. 
uh, and both in the extent and in the timing. And here uh, you have the map of flood uh, to I pick one of the date in 2005, 6, uh, 15, 16, 17 to 20. And um, the big um, uh, flood uh, with the thousand of uh, hectare here. And you can see uh, the, the graph below show uh, this so variability in the inundated area and also the timing. So when you you have the you unpredicted flood even can damage uh, the rice like uh, this one here. Uh, the downstream then when the earlier or longer lasting or higher flood damage the rice here in Kong Tha and part of Ting Yang Dong Tap, etc because of unpredictable uh, flood uh, occurrence. And the solution is what is solution to raise the semi-dike in the Midland region? This is the one first question. And in the coastal region, uh, which is impacted by saline intrusion and hydraulic uh, structure has been built for sun water uh, prevention here. And that allow the dry season, winter, spring rice here, for example, here in the uh, saline intrusion park, people can uh, grow rice than showing like here uh, compared to this uh, isolated map of the um, salinity. And we can see by the analyzing the two maps that the rice can be grown by farmers for um, um, salinity lower than two per thousand. Okay. And then now the future scenarios of climate and human pressure. And the, um, uh, here they work um, also by, by, okay, by um, uh, a separate um, estami uh, projecting the, um, salinity for um, here, the RCP scenario 8.5, we do it for 4.5, 2.6 also. And this one show um, the figure, the resulting thing. Um, if there's no um, bed, uh, river bed incision, the, um, the comparison with the today uh, impact of rice is marginal, the red one here. But if we increase the sand extraction, and then we can have a big, bigger loss of the rice area due to uh, salinity intrusion, for example, in the red part of Jingyang and Jinlong here. And, um, and for the, the other trait is the, the scenario of sea level rice in crowd water extraction, a large part of the delta is projected to be below sea level. And here you can see that when no um, result of mean the hood and an, uh, the lower um, Mekong delta and um, the, um, the part in, in blue that, uh, project to be below sea level here in 2030, 50, with three uh, scenario recovery of groundwater level and stable um, how water extraction or a small increase of water extraction. And you can see here a big um, in, increase of the impact part. And what sure. the, the impact on the rice, um, this leads to the massive uh, project, the loss of rice area in the sinking delta. And here is the first, um, um, the, the first scenario, uh, also sea level rice, uh, 25 centimeters, which is moderated for 2050. And you, we have 18.5% of loss of rice area in the red pixel here. And here, uh, with the increase of ground water extraction, it can go to 30%. And the blue one is the flood area, and the yellow one is the rice uh, area. And option, what are the options for adaptation and mitigation? For the adaptation, uh, simple adaptation to advance the summer, autumn, rice season in the semi-dike 
region. But for that, we need to have the prediction, the short-term prediction of what is going on for the next season. And for the salinity and intrusion, you the to reduce the winter spring rot or to advance this rot season and uh, reduce, meaning that you will not go anymore the crop season and to, to convert to other land use. And the next. Uh, Okay. Okay. The mitigation. Mitigation for both is uh, you need to have a regulation from the upstream dams and the limitation of the um, first flood season in the high dike region. So instead to grow three crops here in Anyang and Dong Tap, you will grow two crops a year. And for the uh, salinity intrusion, the mitigation should be to reduce the sand extraction. Okay, so now, now uh, some detail of the option one, to limit the rice cultivation during fruit season in high fruit zone. I give some argument for that environmental benefit First, the interannual rotation be between wet season rice and flooding. It could be a trade off solution to benefit um, the spin from uh, pluvian sediment deposition. The, it, the second is to regularize hot water regime in downstream region. The third is uh, we can store flood water during the flood season and release the water. In, during the dry season, it can will be beneficial for the reduction of saline water intrusion in dry season in the downstream downstream coastal region. This one, I, the, you will be a, a wet winner on on that part. This part, and for the economic return for yeah. farmers, the rice crop during the fruit season has the lowest yields due to limited solar irradiation and is the most vulnerable to pests and disease. And uh, uh, to reduce the wet season rice would also help to reduce the amount and the cost of fertilizer and pesticide use. And uh, the second one is a, when you practice double crops in, instead of triple crops, it would ena enable planting higher value rice varieties with long growth cycle for the other two crop season. And so this uh, many benefits from the this option one, and it could be a merger of adaptation, um, easy to implement and need to be assessed for future updated decision. And here we have uh, also already observed that it has been uh, practices at certain province, for example, in Dong Tap. Here, only red is a triple rice, blue is a double, and green is single. And here you can see that here is a jam, jam team. And here you can see the rotation. One year the in Dong Tap, they put they let the fruit water come in the field. Another year they they grow the rice. And here, for example, in here, you can see 2019 here, red, and 2020, blue. Okay, so this should be expanded widely for the transition. And, uh, and there is other one that I, I mentioned, if, uh, the reduction of triple high scope will participate to reduce the overuse of fertilizer and pesticides. And here I show the... Um, uh, 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 FAO uh, graph of the use of fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer, in Vietnam as compared to Thailand, Indonesia, Cambodia from 2061 to now. And Vietnam used massive uh, fertilizer compared to other countries. And this is uh, uh, to be noted that in, in Europe, we don't have the rice from Vietnam or how they have rice from Vietnam because the rice produced by Vietnam has been banned from the European market because of the high rate of chemical rice. Then now the sinking 
that uh, is you when the, the, the land is sinking. Adaptation is nothing to do to convert the, to other land use, aquaculture, mangrove. And the mitigation should be to reduce the water extraction. The, um, the project the production, project the production um, adaptation uh, here. Now the rice, uh, if you have um, subsidence, submersion, you have salinity intrusion, um, you, the rice will be uh, uh, shrinking, it's limited to a certain region. And um, um, the, then the, for the rest, it could be to convert to other crops and then use for uh, crop diversity, vegetable, fruit tree, etc. And the other part that I did not um, develop here, then the, uh, the with, with the climate change, the gain of the rice will um, reduce, but not so much. 7 to 10 percent due to temperatures and precipitation. And for, for that, the adaptation should be to change in crop varieties, to change in crop calendar. But the overall mitigation should be to favor quality versus quantity and to, to favor crop and then use diversity. Then now the option two conversion in other land use land cover. Um, and then in satellite intrusion area, you convert the winter spring rice crop to other land use. And for example, after the drought and salinity intrusion in 2016 and 2020, in Benchia, for example, rice has been replaced by vegetable, corn, banana, mulberry, etc. And in shrinking area, um, sinking area, or sinking and sinking. And we need to gradually convert the rice land to mangrove forest and aquaculture. For aquaculture, it's uh, important to avoid the use of ground water for fresh uh, water fish species, which would worsen the loss of elevation through land subsidence. The other um, low uh, carbon farming strategy, the second part. We know that agriculture is the second source of greenhouse gas um, uh, emission in Vietnam. Here uh, on the left, you see the greenhouse gas emission per sector in Vietnam and agriculture is the second. And this um, greenhouse gas um, emission continue to, to, um, to increase to increase compared to other countries, the Thailand, they are decreasing a bit of greenhouse gas. Cambodia Laos, very low. And, okay. and, and, and most of that is the methane emission is continue to increase. And the rice, but the fin, as you know, is one of the most important sources of atmospheric methane, which can be, uh, I see easily reduced in rice paddy feed, uh, okay, in flooded rice feed and an aerobic decomposition of organic matters result in the production of methane. And the um, effective and easy uh, mitigation approach is not to have the continuous flooding, to practice something that we call uh, alternate wetting and drying or alternate, uh, alternate um, uh, drainage. Uh, here, we can let the rice to try um, down to minus 10, minus 15 uh, um, centimeters with our water. And, uh, and here, we, a lot of uh, study and experiment in the past are showing that uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, this practice reduce methane emission by 30% of uh, water um, demand and 40 to 60% reduction of greenhouse gas. And, um, and here, uh, without touching much the engine or the quality of the rice. And this work is, uh, we show here uh, by com collaboration with um, uh, Japanese colleagues, uh, Arai, um, 
uh, y Ronoshi uh, passing uh, postdoc in Viet in Sergio. Um, and here, uh, using remote sensing, we can see that the, we have um, uh, the um, uh, red here, red pixel is the um, continuous flooding, and green is AUPVD. And we can see that a large proportion in the delta is a continuous flooding, where we can uh, implement the AUPVD. Okay, so this low carbon option to expand AWVD irrigation practices. And the challenge now lies in how to introduce this mitigation option to all farmers across Vietnam. And in practice, adoption of AWVD by farmers is a lot of concern, uh, like the distance from the irrigation canal uh, drainage heterogeneous uh, water management practice, um, um, crop calendar, uh, crop varieties, uh, crop um, 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 irrigation, and, and for uh, optimum opening closing schedule of the soup gate to, for many fields at the same time. And this highlighted the fact that investment are needed to enable controlled water management but we see we have seen that Vietnam uh, has uh, signed the, the fletch methane reduction fletch in at COP26 and to reduce the methane emission by 30% um, in 2030 as compared to 2020. And so this participation may represent an opportunity to obtain climate uh, financing for such investment. Okay, so now I go to the conclusion, concluding remarks. With respect to the national strategy, we got to hear uh, three main um, um, resolution and decision. Resolution 120 that we well know in 2017 on sustainable and climate resilient development of the Mekong River Delta to increase the right quality rather than the volume and to diversify the race-based farming system. And this is in line with what we have uh, uh, talked about. Um, the second thing is to reduce greenhouse gas emission in rice production by adapted control and practices. And in, okay, so it's uh, exactly what we, 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 we have seen as well. And the decision 5, um, 555 on the adaptation measure for to climate change for high accurate con contour, we need to complete the warning maps of sun water intrusion, drought, and flooding to provide the basis for technical solution uh, to adjust planting solution, rice variety rotation, and rice uh, to other land use. So oh, this is a, okay. It's a perfect for the short term and local adaptation measure, and the uh, adaptation for the key uh, rice region have been considered independently. And then there's no consideration on the driver of negative effect for uh, the option for the measure of mitigation and no long term projection with scenario of climate change and human impact for land management, long-term land management. In this condition, we, we need to have now consistent adaptation solution across time and space, short and long-term for the wound delta and beyond to understand the driver of uh, which accentuated the climate effect for mit mitigation measure. And also important that I not um, uh, we are not uh, talking here is that the other factors, social, economic, cultural, need to be considered. So I thank you very much for your attention. I finish here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tui. Uh, so we now move on to the discussion part, and I leave the floor to Alexis Drogoul. Mm. Yes, thank you very much. So do you hear me well? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank Tui a lot for her presentation. So it's always a pleasure to 
to listen to her because uh, well, and and I've been listening to her for a number of times already uh, because um, actually it's always uh, the presentations are always very well informed and whatever conclusion or proposal she's making um, it's always backed up by extremely uh, well uh, extremely precise actually data so first of all thanks a lot Twi. Uh, and I really appreciated also the fact that uh, you are now combining uh, measures with proposals of adaptation, proposals of new policies, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So for me, actually, what you are doing, and wh when I say you here, it's not only you yourself, but uh, of course the group you have been able to build at uh, SESBIO Laboratory and um, in your new, new functions as well. So wh what you are doing in terms of monitoring, measuring, collecting data is for me extremely important uh, because um, it's it appears if you look at the literature on the Vietnam Mekong Vietnamese Mekong Delta but also other deltas and I will come back to come to this at the end your work is actually invaluable to of course monitor uh, and follow what has happened in the past so in the last uh, i don't know 5 10 15 sometimes 20 years and also what is happening right now and i remember we had a discussion once about uh, flooding and uh, um, sorry about uh, episodes of dryness uh, of drought and uh, how it affected vietnamese production and and actually you were able to 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 produce some new data and then some new knowledge about how it affected Vietnamese production of rice, <clears throat> which were extremely important even at the policy level uh, to, to, to maybe take some countermeasures. So I'm really admirative actually, and since a long time ago, about the quality and also the quantity basically <laughs> of data you, you have been able to produce. From something that appears to me as a little bit of black magic okay so to derive all this knowledge from satellite imagery for me is something really really incredible and the work you have been doing all these years you and your colleagues from CESBIO of course is to my knowledge uh, one of the most comprehensive sources of data about the two processes you have been highlighting in your presentation and which are of course, strongly interconnected. So one is the intensification of rice culture and uh, its impact on the different ecosystems we can find in the Mekong Delta, but also the different environmental threats or phenomena, sorry, that maybe pose threats to, to that threaten it. And of course, the second uh, process, which is the greenhouse gases emissions of this rice culture and especially methane, and the threats it poses to uh, basically the, 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 the objective of the Vietnam government of net zero emission by 2030, if, I, if I'm not mm -hmm. uh, uh, mistaken. So for, for me, it's really, you, you are producing data and knowledge, not only data, not only raw data, but also knowledge that on which we can build a number of things. And it's interesting, uh, in, in my opinion, to see that in your presentation, you, you have actually spent almost less time on the presentation of the raw data and how you obtain it itself than on the proposals of a number of um, measures, for example, to uh, mitigate the emissions or uh, to improve uh, the way uh, Vietnam is um rising rice in in the mekong so for me this move towards um uh, of course not only predictions but basically proposals in terms of policy opens two questions and i will uh, i will ask the first one uh because uh, i ask I, I decided to ask it at the first question because it, it was a little bit at the heart of the GIMS project. Okay. And of course, many, many other projects. But the, the question is whether we, we are able to derive uh, future scenarios from 
the uh, measurements we are able to do today. In, what, in, in, in one word, actually, <clears throat> given the fact that we are in a very complex system where human behaviors and policies have a lot of impacts on the choice of uh, production, production yield, what kind of production will be favored next year, et cetera, et cetera. But also uh, a context where the environmental conditions are extremely variable okay, and are likely to evolve in ways we cannot completely predict right now, at, the, at, at least at the scale of the data. Okay. So knowing that we are in this kind of social environmental context, do you think that the past or, or the present, okay, today, can be the best predictor of the future? Okay. In, 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 in one word, actually, do you think your work right now can be used to make proposals? We, we all agree that it can be used to monitor what happens, but do you think it is enough um, to produce, uh, for example, policy proposals in terms of rice production or uh, types of production? Okay, and, well, okay, your first question, the two, um, the, is it the observation today is the best predictor for the future? Um, there's um, uh, there's uh, some cases that we can predict, like um, uh, the work by our colleagues from the Netherlands on the sal uh, salinity intrusion uh, from subsidence, with the then we could uh, even put the human question in it the exploitation of uh, sand and of uh, raw water um, in, in on top of on the climate change and the uh, uh, river flow etc. But something we cannot do like uh, the flood, uh, like uh, when I talk about the flood that uh, impact the rice in Gantar, Dingyang, etc. I, 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 I did not mention how we predict for, for the future. Uh, we cannot predict because the part of it is the human uh, pressure, which is the, the managing the management of the dams and also the management of local sluice gates, a dike, et cetera, open. And, and this is unpredictable. What I, I, I just show for that is the variability in time and in the, and in the intensity of the flood. And this uh, will not be reduced in the future. And this one, really, we cannot uh, use a hydrological uh, models to predict uh, the, the, how the flood will be. Uh, we need also to um, add the hydraulic model for the reservoir, um, for stuck gate, etc. And so it's too complex that is, uh, it will be uh, not very meaningful. Just to say that it will be unpredictable. And okay, but for the for the um, uh, so, so, um, subsidence, we we it's a, it's a, a bit more uh, a biophysical and geophysical problem. We could we could handle with um, more than, but with the um, okay for the um, for the rice um, uh, yen, for example, we also. Um, Mm, we have seen the change in rice mood uh, in with the um, uh, climate change. But uh, what happened uh, mostly is the rice yin change with the fertilizer. And this also not taking into account much in the modern. And so uh, the work will go more in the Mekong data, more and more complex. And more and more unpredictable, and and this uh, what also we can we 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 become very modest, and we say that okay in this condition maybe we limited the the um, uh, intensive agriculture, which in the uh, for crop diversity, and we preserve the environment. Then then this is a 
what we we have to to decide not not um, because beyond that it's uh, difficult okay thank you okay. I, I thank also you very think, much. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, actually, the, the, because for me, it's more a philosophical question than, uh, than something else, but is what, what is the value of uh, recommendations you could make if at some point you decide that it, it is impossible to take the human behavior into account? I mean, we, in my opinion, we, we, are, we have now technologies that probably allow not, of course, to predict, because I agree with you, it's unpredictable. Okay, okay. We cannot predict anything. We Actually, we cannot have any probability of occurrence of any events in the future if it's based on human behavior. But we can draw scenarios, like you do, actually. Okay, yeah. And like yeah. we do for climate and where, like we do for other yeah. things. Yeah. So, so I think it, it is a, the, the, the question behind what, what you're doing. Um, yeah. I can't say that it will be it will be useful for predicting things, but as you say, very and and you are very right in saying that it's useful for building scenarios. Yeah, for building. We don't know which scenario will be will be yeah. occurring. Then, okay. Yes, it's it's it's. it's uh, we we can consider uh, all the studies as, um, to derive a tool for the decision makers. And and what the the decision makers are interested in is also our platform. And I, uh, the, our, when we 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 make a platform with different scenario in the Virsco project, the scenario if we we go to to how many uh, cubic meters of water uh, extraction or uh, sand mining, etc., you will have this effect and or that effect. And this is a, a scenario, a tool in the platform uh, for the decision makers to, 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 to see and to what could happen. We don't guarantee that it will happen like this, but what could happen. Of yeah. course. So, and also, okay. yeah. please, the, the most important is the long term, because um, right now, most of the decision is a short term, short term decision for um, for to cope with the season next year or next month, etc. And and for land uh, management, for to predict how the Mekong Delta will be in twenty years, for land administration, maybe you need a long term projection also. And those kind of tool need to be complete more and more with a more realistic um, uh, uh, scenario. And also the more we learn, the more it will be complete. Okay, so I think I have two minutes for the another question or remark. Um, and, and this one is about um, generalization of what, what you're doing, because of course the Vietnamese Mekong Delta is not the only Delta in the world. Mm -hmm. And actually, one key question in what you are doing and proposing is how it, how your work is already or could be generalized to other contexts, measures, data collection, even maybe proposals, okay, or recommendations. Mm -hmm. So not only for the sake of generalization, because we we are scientists and we like it, but because actually different deltas. Um, might offer different um, why not solutions okay so uh, they, they can they, they are probably at different development stages uh, and maybe there are solutions in uh, I don't know in Bangladesh or in China or whatever that could be appropriate for the Viet for the Vietnamese case and conversely uh, also um, solutions uh, taken right now or policies taken right now that could be appropriate for other contexts. So is it something you are already considering doing maybe? Okay, because I don't know all your uh, work. And uh, so I don't know if you have any comments on this. Yes, okay. The um, the first thing is the, um, the general approach then to look at the um, recent past with the geospatial data in order to see exactly where and when and how and the, the thing happens 
And this uh, is uh, using remote sensing is a very powerful tool to, 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 to get the information. And for this um, uh, precise um, observation and to, um, to, to, to project for the, to the future, this approach interests the other part of the, um, of the work. Uh, like, uh, for example, in Thailand now, they want to, to, to maybe to do something like it in order to, 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 to make use of um, uh, more uh, tools for, for, for projecting for the future. So the, the approach could be applied everywhere. But now we go back to the Denta. Each Denta has its own uh, problems and they, um, some, uh, there's a common problem. It's like the uh, um, subsidence, uh, salinity, <laughs> intrusion, um, flooding, uh, etc. But um, then the, um, the way people uh, exporting the land is different. Um, maybe they don't have a, a massive use of the sand, um, river sand or, um, or raw water. Um, but I think that the same approach could be uh, applied to other denta, but with um, adaptation to the denta in particular, uh, you see the problem of social, economic, cultural, like the Bangladesh will not be exactly like the Mekong Denta. And yeah, and, and the, the Thai Denta also is different. And so this one uh, need to be, uh, to be looked at uh, a way maybe uh, to coordinate something, maybe by you, yeah, coordinate something to look at few of the dental in the work in, or in Southeast Asia to share the, the tunes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very, very much. So Marie-Noël, these were my two remarks and I think it's time right now. So I let you the floor and thank you very much to it was really, really interesting. Thanks thank, thank, thank you very, thank you very much, Alexi. Thank you, Tui. Uh, Alexi, I know you, you have to, to leave uh, maybe a bit before the, the end of the session. So thanks, uh, thanks again for, uh, for, for being here and this uh, very, very interesting discussion. Uh, so now the, 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 the discussion is open uh, to the rest of the audience. So I see we, we have already two questions in the chat from Pascal Linhart uh, from CIRAD. Uh, so I don't know, Tree, if you, if you can read it. One is about uh, what about rice fish, rice shrimps uh, strategies, uh, as, uh, sorry, rice fish, rice shrimps, rice duck integrated systems as part of coping strategies. And a question about to what extent uh, actually vegetable and uh, banana and the rest could be alternative to rice since they're also sensitive to saline intrusions. Uh, mm -hmm. So these are these these uh, these two questions. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. one from Benoit from AFD uh, in, in the chat. So maybe mm -hmm. we can start with the the, the question. Uh, from Pascal Linhart, and uh, so if you, if you want to talk, uh, please raise your hand, and we will allow you to uh, have access to the microphone. Okay, so I I, I respond to Pascal um, that I I did not have the pleasure to know you. You you need you maybe are not far from Toulouse, but okay. So. Um, uh, what uh, what happened in um, okay the rice fish rice cream rice duck integrate system at the part of the coping strategies this also uh, I I did not uh, talk much uh, it changing land use uh, a um, rotation agriculture uh, and rice and and also mix uh, rice, scream, rice, um, uh, duck, etc. Then this in the Kamau Peninsula, they, um, uh, they are practicing this a lot. Then maybe I will have more time for, for, for looking at, at that. Uh, the, um, the second thing you say that surprised to see that the banana, mulberry, etc. 
in it's 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 what exactly what the people in in Benjia has done. They say maybe it's not for saline uh, uh, intrusion much, but also for the drought because when you have saline intrusion in the drought, and then without water, the rice is not the um, cultivation is not um, effective, and so they change the but they don't use the saline. The problem is also we need also to to think very hard about when we um, plant another um, crops. Uh, do we need to pump the raw water to to irrigate the crop in order in order to also to avoid the saline um, water from the surface water? If if this is the case, it you worsen the the um, the the case the condition and so this this I I just put that because of some some work done before to promote that they to admit there they should um, plant vegetable banana etc but because of much more because of the job okay so this is, is it okay Mr Pascal Nina Yeah, okay. thanks a lot. <laughs> I think it would be worth talking more about that, but uh, thanks a lot for this, uh, for this additional element. Thanks. Okay, so maybe maybe we, we can have uh, some contact with you in order to, to dialogue um, more about that. Okay, and now I see the question of the impact of production cuts of price, self-sufficient in Vietnam. Uh, no. Uh, the um, the, um, the 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 Vietnam rice has um, the bulk of the export is the Vietnam is self sufficient in rice um, in in rice and then the the part that the the surplus cultivate in the Mekong Delta is for export and for export in country. Uh, low income country because the, the rice exported from Vietnam is is cheaper, much cheaper than the rice from Thailand, for example, because of the uh, it's not the it did not meet the standards for the international market, and so this is to cut the rice and to 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 concentrate to the high quality rice if you want to export, for example, and I I. I have seen that this Vietnam is self-sufficient for the rice already. And also the diet of the Vietnamese now changed a lot. Before, is rice is a primary food, but now the people eat vegetable, meat, fish, etc. Yeah. It's okay for the, the question. Um, okay, and Benoit Fave also asked. You have analyzed a WD from the meeting point of view, but there's doubt that this some problem. Um, okay, uh, okay. This this we in this work by Arai, uh, we have um, N2O, the um, nitrous oxide emission, and we 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 have seen uh, no increase, and uh, because uh, before that we have seen that in um, in Ninja, uh, the experiment showed that there's an increase of N2O. And then the experiment by Arai in 2015 to 17, they, he, 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 he did a measurement of, of N2O. And, and we, we I, I should show that uh, as well. OK. OK. So is, Mr. Benoit, is, is it OK? Because the the AWD uh, depend on, on on the condition of practicing, and um, now more and more people found that the N two O increase uh, uh, by uh, the the by Indian colleagues. Now it's not we people didn't find in the Mekong Delta, for example. Is it okay? 
thank you for the for the answer. I can just uh, um, go back to the first question regarding the self sufficiency. Uh, my my question was regarding the the increase of population in Vietnam, and the fact that uh, according to your projections you you are thinking that uh, we can have a decrease in the rice production in the in the delta mekong and my question is uh, how do you see the the, the perspective of uh, food uh, or rice self sufficiency in the future let's say in in 2030 or 20 2050 yeah. That I, I need to work with economists from AFD yeah, about that because uh, what I learn now in by looking at the literature is the the the, the Vietnamese uh, the the amount of rice the how many kilograms they eat for a year it's decreased drastically because of the the population increasing but the urban population they eat uh, less and less rice because they have a, a diversity of, uh, uh, of diets, uh, the food, um, vegetable, fish, uh, um, meat. And this is uh, something that we can look together if you, if you wish. And the projection, we, not, uh, we uh, didn't see that we need to increase the rice production for the increasing population. And also the population, maybe when, uh, somehow saturated is uh, the, first, um, the the amount of um, increase in population now is decreasing much compared to the past. So this uh, should be another another work to to be done. Thank you. So we we're, we're running out of time. Maybe we can take a, a last question. I I see one from Mr. Jean Louis Brier. Yes. You can it, talk. Can, uh, I can, I can, can I? Uh, can I? Uh, he can talk now. He could, perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I try. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, uh, my question would be: What what are the uh, different cultures which are alternative to rice? I mean, for instance, uh, uh, some uh, seasonal crops which are not uh, uh, produced at the same time as rice, or uh, some crops which do not depend on, on water, so they can be, become alternative to, uh, to rice. I mean, uh, it is clear that uh, there are many possibilities of uh, uh, agricultural crops which are <clears throat> alternative to rice, and they must not be uh, adverse to rice production. So uh, what are the, uh, the crops which could be considered as alternative to rice among the, all the cultures which are, uh, which are available? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a other alternative. Um, vegetable is uh, one thing. Uh, and also um, easy crop like uh, uh, sweet potatoes, um, peanuts, uh, Etc. And this should be analyzed um, region by per region because of the you need also uh, the soil um, quality. You need them, um, and this need to be done um, thoroughly. What uh, to uh, what to replace uh, to rice with um, what uh, kind of crops? Because the, the usually the farmer they have the tradition because they know that in his, uh, in his region, they could grow uh, peanuts uh, or cork uh, or um, vegetable or anything. And, and maybe some study uh, needs to be done by, by Sirac, for example, to see what kind of crops to, be, uh, to replace the rice better than, than um, okay. And then the crop, now, now also people look at the crop with high income. It would bring high income, but then then it could be at the long term it could be in detriment of the environment um, condition, and, and okay so this also could be a study to 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 <clears throat> to look how <clears throat> what to replace at the um, rice for long term solution. 
Thank you very much, Thuy. Uh, so time is running out. So I would like to, to thank again, so our panelists, uh, so Thuy and Alexis who, who left. Uh, thank also to all participants for uh, being here. I, I hope this presentation and uh, discussion were uh, useful to everyone. So before we, we close the session, uh, I would like to announce the next webinar, which will be uh, next week, uh, so Wednesday, 19th of April. And uh, we will talk again about the Mekong Delta, and we will have the pleasure to have a presentation from Clara Julien on migration as adaptation. So a topic uh, a bit different, but also of uh, very, very high interest uh, for all, all people uh, interesting in the future, uh, in the future of the Mekong Delta. Uh, so thank you. Thank you again, everyone. Yeah. And I hope you will join us next week also. Have a nice thank you end of day much. or nice afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Marie Noen. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's okay. Nice day. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Kotui. Thank you, Marie Noel. Goodbye, all. Bye. Okay. Hi.